Okay, now this is a funny kind of silly way of recording something. Rafi asked me to uh, upload onto YouTube a, a video of a thing. It was a Facebook Live thing that I did when I was pedaling my bike. So I'm just going to record it right on here because this is a way that I know how to do this. And I don't know how to do it no other way. So here we go. This is a talk about Ravi Zacharias and the grieving in my heart and uh, some stuff about Abraham. Here we go. Listen up. This is the deal. Look, I had two parents who were seminary students and my daddy quit Christianity and my mom was secretly filled in the Holy Spirit and they both, both served the poor in the slums of Camden and Philadelphia. And I didn't know how important that was until late in life. So I've got some serious invisible credentials I'm not a famous person, but inside, I'm kind of more famous than even some of your most famous teachers. And I'm just boasting in the Lord in that. He picked me out for this, not, <laughs> believe me, I didn't ask for this this stuff. Here we go. Listen up. Okay. I'm on the, my way to dialysis, and my heart's full of so much stuff. Number one. Break away from your life. Here's the overview of the Bible. Abraham. Abraham is the one that those in Islam respect because brother Ishmael was born from Abraham and so was brother Isaac from whom came the Hebrews. Abraham is important. Abraham did three enormous things. Number one, he left all of his people and his stuff and his peer group. He checked out. He left his life. Number two, he treated strangers like royalty in a way that most family members would say, how come you're giving them our best stuff? We were saving that for so-and-so's birthday. Number one, he broke away. Number two, he treated strangers like royalty, and those strangers happened to be literally angelic beings, gods. And then number three, he got a miracle son. I mean, I'm talking about an impossible conception. And he was willing to sacrifice... <laughs> okay, I'm on the, my way to dialysis, and my heart's full of so much stuff. Willing to sacrifice that miracle goodie. Are you willing to sacrifice your desire for miracle signs and wonders to actually sit down with a crazy family member and work with them for two years to help them be refreshed that's the kind of stuff that the sweet one will call you to do as soon as miracles happen to you those miracles end up becoming idolatries yes you get all excited about the miracles and what does Jesus say when the disciples are getting excited about the miracles he says listen Let's move on to the next town and find out who the Holy Spirit has prepared for our coming. Nah, nah, don't get excited about the miracles. Move, 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 move. Be led by the Spirit, moment to moment. So, break out of your life is number one. The elephant in the room. Not obey our nice church services, but break out. Now... What about Moses? Moses had a huge worldly life experience, just like me. I went to Russia when I was 16. I toured Europe on trains. During the punk scene, I had a corporate sales life. Traveled back and forth across the country. Lived in San Francisco, New Orleans, Maine, New York, Philadelphia, Chattanooga, Tennessee and some other cool places. So, Moses 
was in a hot shot big blight, and then he was out in the fields with the stinky sheep for 40 years. He was 80 years old when he did his first, when, the thing he's famous for, it wasn't until he was 80 years old that he did that stuff. Okay. Happy Monday, y'all. So, Abraham, Moses, broke away and then broke away again. And then the Israelites broke away from Egypt and they started complaining. We want to go back to Egypt where we've got some garlic and onions for our food. All he got is this manna. And they had forgotten the amazing reality of 3 to 12 million people in slavery for 40, you know, 400 years. They were in slavery for 400 years. They got out without a war. And they stayed alive in a desert for 40 years. But they complained and they didn't actually want to break away. They were longing for their old life. Don't look back or you'll die. Don't complain about what you got right now or you'll die spiritually. Okay, so Abraham and Moses and the Israelites broke away. But then you got these commercial fishermen. Number one, Jesus does the miraculous catch of fish. Those guys caught so many fish that it would have paid off the bills for the entire town and all their families. So, therefore, they understood that if they hang out with this guy, he can actually give supernatural... He can give supernatural supply. So, therefore, these commercial fishermen... These hard-ass working stiffs, ordinary guys, watch the movie, The Perfect Storm. That's an American version of a fishing village. Tough people going through a lot of difficult stuff. Watch the movie, A Perfect Storm. Those are the people that Jesus picked out to be his 12. Those people. Now he handpicked them because he could see their hearts. As it says in the scripture, Jesus knows their thoughts. That means your thoughts are being known and all your thoughts are going to be evaluated. So if you've got yourself caught up in bitterness, complaining, negativity, and more of a focus on entertainment, than serving the human family, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. Your thoughts are going to be evaluated. Your purposes, your motivations, your ideas, your dreams and visions and hopes are going to be evaluated. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? Oh, it's probably pretty windy. Oh, man. Cheap production. Okay. So the commercial fishermen leave their equipment and the hired guys, they leave their equipment and the hired guys with the old grandpops who aren't tough enough to run the fishing business. And they go follow this guy. They don't follow him just because he's a nice teacher. They saw they saw that he could bring supernatural supply. Nobody ever pointed that out to me. Jesus did the miraculous catch of fish, 
all these tough guy Jewish fishermen saw that this dude can actually make supernatural supply, and so they busted out of their life situation. They left their money-making equipment, their boats. They left their boats and the hired men and the grandpas in the boat, which you just don't do when you're a business owner. So, we've got these 12 that bust out of standard life, and, you know, when these Christianity come people come around me, which just honestly at this point pisses me off, because my Christ American Christianity has been so brainwashed since Constantine and the kings of Europe, it doesn't even look like the Family Freedom Party, that is what the communion in the home is, is just freedom from worries and guidance, helping one another get exactly what we need, from help with our business, to a good partner to share our body with and live a life with. All these things are essential things that were top shelf things in the old home communion group reality that lasted for 300 years and then was shut down by the wicked kings of Europe who didn't want to admit that they got into office by killing people. They didn't want to admit that they want to quit one wife and grab another one. And they didn't want to admit that they have way too much excess, excess, greed and not caring for the poor. So... Christianity that I've been surrounded by is wicked and nasty, and when I was 14 years old, I perceived that it was really messed up, and I quit at 14, and I was a promiscuous, polyamorous, anti-Christian bigot for the better part of 25 to 30 years. Then... I got a bizarre crash in, and I hid away from my music, my cinema, my favorite hobbies, my car shows. I just hid away to try to find the secrets in the writings. But somebody had not laid out to me properly. I was like, they never taught me how to get business advice direct from the sweet one in the spirit realm. So... Number one is breakaway. They don't talk about that in Christianity. As far as when Christians come around me, I'm like, hey, hey, did you do that living with 12 guys on one bank account thing? How was that for you? I mean, that's ordinary Christianity, right? Jesus and 12 guys cruising around, helping families, healing people, and speaking properly about the afterlife. And all kinds of wild things happening to him. Did you do that part of Christianity? Cruising around with 12 guys on one bank account. So, breaking away from the standard life is one of the realities of what they call ecclesia, or the called out royal servants to the human family. Ecclesia means the called out ones, the ones who are called out of the world system to create a precious family, the nicest family in the neighborhood. Okay, so breaking out is number one. But if you're a female human being, being supportive to the ones who have broken out is a reality. In Luke chapter 8, you see the 12 guys and Jesus operating on one bank account, and prominent women see that they are really doing something special, and they're like, okay, listen, make sure these guys have shoes and something to eat, and when they're heading into a town, find people to receive them. The women were concerned about going forward of these people of loving kindness. That's a cool balance. But, since we're in American society, if you have younger people, 
I enthusiastically encourage you to do what basically my mom did for us. She sent us away from America. That's what I call a transformation vacation. Getting out of your peer group, your mental structures, all the things that you do and think, all of your entertainments, breaking away from that and going somewhere separate. Whether it's helping poor folks in Appalachia, whether it's going to Central America to do something, or whether it's taking a transformation vacation. I work with 20 centers around the country. This is not you know, a promotional thing. Those centers are free. They don't charge people. But it has been super effective at helping people get out of their personality disorders, especially being stuck on you know, drugs and bad relationships and stuff. So, breakout is number one. Number two is sex pleasure. Oh my gosh. Sit down and let's get real. What is the oldest profession? And what is the biggest money maker on the internet? A focus on sexual pleasure. If we don't focus on the fact that male human beings are uh, like seeking a pleasure surround, that's foolish. And then the family honesty group, that is actually true ecclesia. And then lastly, the power of singleness. You can go farther, you can have more miracles, you can have more friends. The children of the early disciples were taught, they were taught, either you walk single like Jesus and surrounded by a groovy family full of kids and all kinds of great stuff, either you're going to go right from childhood into adulthood without visiting the pleasure place. Like, okay, all right, so you wanted to go to Paris. Are you going to be okay if you actually never go to Paris? Okay, all right, you'd really like to share your arousal with somebody. Are you going to die if you don't have a person to share your arousal with? So you sit down, you coach the kids. Either it's singleness and learning how to be content in your singleness, or it's the marriage bed with the added problem of you are responsible to care about the weaknesses, desires, and calamities of the one that you're one flesh with. So, if you walk the singleness life, you have more freedom to move. But you don't have the sweetness of the marriage bed. If you have the marriage bed, you are responsible to shelter fatherless children. You're responsible to create the most wonderful family place in the neighborhood. And you're stuck to the evils of your of your spouse, and uh, sometimes that just becomes a beautiful compliment, and it's not a problem. So anyhow, those are the four things: break away from your stuff. At least the men, or at least the younger people, the children, they need a season of breaking away from their peer group. Number two is the obvious power of sex pleasure. Number three is the family honesty group, the brotherhood group to get discernments from. So you're not just one family, you're a cluster of families and you're all working together on decisions. It's awesome. And then lastly, the power of singleness, which is, is actually lost in Christianity. I mean, if you look up the single people's power ministry, or if you look up the Ministry of Widows and Virgins, you'll get a whole snowstorm of information about how the fact that in the early church, one of the coolest things was the favorite aunties and uncles who trained the orphan kids, who kept the singing going, who wrote the poems, who had like the time for creativity, and they were blended in with the family, the single people's power ministry, the ministry of widows and virgins. Jesus actually taught his apostles to do that, and that was one of the first things that the kings of Europe set aside. They locked up the single people in monasteries and convents so that they were no longer helping out with the marriages so the married couples could go off and enjoy themselves more and not get bitter towards each other and they tear care for the children and things like that and they took the the single men and women they put them away they locked them up 
and then there were a lot of other big problems. So, peace be with you. Remember, the four elephants in the room. Break away from your life, or at least connect to someone, attached to someone who has done that breakaway program. Number two, be real about the sex pleasure and check in. Remember Ravi Zach Zacharias and his problems. The Brotherhood group, the the Family Honesty group, that's the thing that, that Ravi Zacharias did not have. That's the thing that he was not teaching, which is one of the most important basics of the faith, is that we come together and we admit our faults before baptism and we admit our faults, when, faults whenever we come together. We don't pray, we don't worship, we don't do nice teachings. First, we sit together in a family setting and we admit our downsides and our evil choices. That is Ecclesia, the family honesty meal group of a cluster of at least two or three families. And then lastly, the single people's power ministry, the power of singleness. I gotta get into a clinic. Okay, so that's the talk. Hi, Ravi. I did my best. I hope this turns out. Uh, is there anything else to say? Yeah, the repetitive reality is that none of us have had the consistent, powerful cluster of two or three families with brothers cheerfully admitting their faults. Hi, I want to remind you that the troubling spirits in my life are this thing and that thing and this thing. And I did okay this week, but in this one area, I wasn't so good. And I feel like God is calling me to do this un unusual thing. So please be praying because I need friends to help me with this unusual thing. It feels like impossible walking on water to me. So as we mention to one another as brothers and challenge one another to the most excellent lifestyle, then the women can have more fun and the kids can have more fun. And they can say, Mommy, Daddy, I had this dream. Or, Mommy, Daddy, do you think you could ask God if we're allowed to blah, 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 blah? And the children can feel that their questions and the things that come to them from God are actually respected. And they feel honorable in the earliest season of life. They know that God is with them. That's the goal for us to build the Family Honesty Meal group and rebuild the, well, we have to rebuild both of them, rebuild the family honesty group type of church gathering and rebuild the single people's power ministry. And the family honesty group church gathering sends an outreach team into the world <coughs> every day, every day. Our purpose of being a comfortable home and family is to send people supernaturally out into the street or two by two on the internet it's always more fun on the internet if you're side by side you'd actually pray for a name and pull up a name and send them videos <laughs> okay all the best to you yahoo thank you jesus